Hi and good evening everyone. Uh, I am Atul and I am going to be talking about Parallels, which is a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, and the whole idea of building Parallels was to enable zero trust access for Kubernetes resources. Uh, I am sure when, whenever we are dealing with Kubernetes, we know that access management is a critical thing and often gets complex. Uh, what, what happens is that while it provides RBAC out of the box, uh, especially when you are scaling and uh, you know when you have a lot of users, a lot of resources that come into play, it becomes really difficult to manage all the permissions uh, because you know you can lead into issues like uh, you know uh, free permissions roaming around. So you know for example you had a team and people move, you know there's a churn in the team, then you know it becomes difficult to manage those permissions and track those permissions and who has what access. And I think that's where uh, zero trust as a principle comes in uh, very handy. And Parallels is one project that gives you RBAC, but with zero trust, built, uh, zero trust access built in. So one of the things that Parallels does great is uh, just-in-time access management. So by tradition, what happens in Kubernetes is you, know, you define roles, you define permissions, you define uh, uh, you know, users, and then you assign these things to them. But one of the things that Parallels gives you out of the box is uh, just-in-time access management. Plus, it also allows you to mix and match your roles and permissions that you need. So, you know, you can create your own role. You can, cre you can mix and match permissions, uh, you know, whatever you need, uh, you need to provide. We have a certain set of permissions that are provided uh, by default. And then after that, you know, you can add your own, uh, you know, permissions that you want and assign it to the roles that you need. Uh, also, since this is just in time, you know, by default, zero trust is embedded in it. So by default, if anyone tries to access, obviously they don't have access to it. So it, it all happens just in time. Uh, outside of that, what it also does is it enables you to use your existing SSO. So currently it has support for GitHub, GitLab, Google, uh, and Microsoft, I guess. But apart from that, if you have any other uh, SSO, third party SSO that you're using, something like a key cloak, you can easily integrate uh, Parallels with it. So it will keep everything, whatever you have existing, uh, and you can just bring in uh, any other SSO that you, that you want. Uh, and then you can manage resources from cluster level to the user level as well. And uh, you, know, you can, again, li like I said, you know, it gives you control access using pre-configured roles. So there are certain roles that we have given. And everything in Parallels revolves around projects. So you essentially create a project. And within a project, you import a cluster. And then that's, where, that's when you start assigning permissions to users to a particular project. And that's when they start uh, interacting with your cluster as in when that is required. So how Parallels actually works. So this is a very high level overview of what Parallels is and what it does. So if, if I have to keep it in very simple words, it's a proxy that, that, adds, that acts in the, in the middle whenever any request is sent to your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, what it does is that internally it uses uh, Ori Kratos for identity uh, management and it uses Caspin for uh, admission policies. So on the left hand side you can see you know developers, DevOps, uh, QA. So these are the people who will interact with your clusters. So, so, sorry, they interact with Parallels. And this can be done in multiple ways. So Parallels gives you a dashboard. Uh, it also gives you a, a command line tool with which you can you know, access your clusters. You can configure it in your CI/CD pipelines. And on the other side, you have all the cloud infrastructure, cloud providers that are present. So if you have any Kubernetes clusters, irrespective of where it is, you can bring them onto Parallels without poking any holes in your firewall. So uh, I don't have much time to dig deep into the architecture, but what we do here is we have created something called as a relay. So it has two components. One is a relay server, and other is the relay client. So the relay client is put on all these uh, you know, clusters that we are trying to onboard. And that is the one that communicates with the relay server. So it essentially eliminates the need for a firewall, uh, the need for you know, poking or configuring your firewall to give access to Parallels to your cluster. So I think uh, that's, that's a very uh, easy stuff on Parallels when, whenever you, know, you want to onboard a particular cluster. And uh, if I have to talk about the journey, so the first release of Parallels was done in August 22. Uh, and then we submitted it to CNCF in July 2022. Uh, and then December, it was onboarded as a CNCF sandbox project. And since then, we have had nine releases. Uh, it's actively maintained by uh, four or five of us. I'm the only one over here. Uh, one of my colleagues, he wasn't able to make it. Uh, and then in the latest release, we have implemented Cosign as a requirement from the CNCF for, to, you know, to maintain the health of the uh, project. And apart from that, we have also enabled health checks. So uh, the Parallels dashboard that is provided, uh, what happens is whenever you are onboarding a cluster previously, you wouldn't know 
whether your connection is broken with your cluster. So you know you essentially had to run some commands, run kubectl, go go into the logs of relay server and see if the connection is working or not as expected, and whether your cluster is actually connected to Parallels or not. But now we have implemented health check. So the moment you log into the Parallels dashboard, you will be able to see whether your cluster is actually connected to Parallels or not, and if there are any issues or not. So these are a couple of uh, things, the couple of latest features that uh, you know we have added in the releases. Uh, apart from that, we have been uh, present at a couple of events as well. So we were there uh, at KubeCon EU, where we had a virtual booth. So we did a virtual uh, you know talk hours with that. Uh, at KubeCon NA, we had a physical booth, and then we did a couple of talks at KCD Pakistan and KCD Bengaluru as well. Uh, this year, we just have this lightning talk, but then I am around, and there are a couple of users who are using Parallels. So you know we can surely. Uh, Interact, and if you want to learn more about Parallels, uh, these are the GitHub, uh, you know, GitHub, GitHub profile, the website, and Twitter. So, you know, if you want to get started with Parallels, we have guides for working with different environments that you have. So, if you are running a Minikube cluster, or if you are running an Azure, or if you are running an EKS, uh, we have one click, uh, not one click, but we have, you know, very easy to follow guide for each of these. Uh, if you are on DigitalOcean, we have. Uh, Parallels available on the marketplace as well. So if you want to try out Parallels and if you have a DigitalOcean account, just go ahead and uh, you know look for Parallels in the marketplace. One click installation and you will get access to Parallels. And we are open to contributions. Uh, there are some open issues on the UI as well as on the backend and the relay side. So if you are someone who is good at Go and want to contribute, please feel free to check out the open issues and help us uh, you know build the project and take it further. So yeah, that's all I had. That's my time. Thank you so much.